Today we're going to interview artist Jay Taylor, um, who is a visual artist whose works investigate the mindsets within urban environments sectioned by classism. Taylor's free-flowing style authorizes him to deliver a visual language of storytelling through various mediums, but most commonly through a combination of paint, photography, and film, and music. References of American history through the experience of black and brown people can be found in his work, along with iconography of popular culture. Taylor's work is versatile. On the one end of the spectrum, his works painted in tones of gray, dismiss color, and environmental aesthetic. References as an effort to force us to deal with the solitude of each subject matter and the stylistic characteristics of his portraiture. The lack of visual complexity combined with techniques of pattern interruption politely escort us to the conceptual complexity, whether pleasant or disturbing. On the other end of the spectrum, his works painted in rich, colorful hues embrace the diversity of culture and transcribe gathered emotion onto the canvas in an effort to share in a sense of authenticity, style, and design. So I look forward to talking about that with you later on. Thank you. A lot of really interesting concepts in those statements. Right. So the other thing I want to do is thank you for um, your interest in taking part of our school's mission, which is to provide engaging, informative, and current programming here, um, particularly in the art department and also especially in the Cliff Gallery. Um, your exhibition, this interview, and hopefully the ongoing online di dialogue enliven the much needed discussion around the topic of art. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. Um, so let's get some context here. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like for you to talk about how you secured an exhibition here at the Cliff Gallery. How did that come about? Um, well, it's been in the making for over a year or so now. Um, it was just some wonderful art people that experienced an exhibit of mine like maybe a year and a half ago. And they really were impressed with just the, I guess, the arrangement of the paintings, uh, the message behind the paintings, and um, the young lady that was actually managing this gallery at the time um, heard about it and wanted to also bring it here. So. Uh, as time has gone on, you know, the work has continued to progress and uh, we've kind of come up with this beautiful display here of, of work and um, I'm working with you on that. So sure. that's pretty much how it happened. I mean, it's how everything kind of happens, right? Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, it's, the word of mouth is, is so fantastic and to be able to be introduced to the gallery here, the Cliff Gallery, um, it was just a perfect marriage for something a little bit more interesting, in my opinion, than what they initially saw then. Yeah, so this this collaboration or, of, of, or just all of these works together, it kind of is better suited for a institution environment, mm -hmm. you know, um, more abstract thoughts and something that can be so boxed in, right? when you talk about students and learning and different situations like that, to be able to bring something that is a little bit more abstract, you know, especially with the art department, you know, it's mm -hmm. like, it was a great opportunity to show something like this. So that's how it kind of happened. So it's, you just addressed my next question was, okay. why did you say yes? Is there something that mm, is really special? It's a great question. Um, I said yes to this. Um, even more so now than when it was initially proposed to me because once you learn about Mountain View College and you learn about what takes place at the Cliff Gallery, it's all about educating the students, you know, and bringing something uh, new to the table to also give them the ability to see uh, different artists' works, you know. Um, one of the ways that I find inspiration is also watching other artists, right? Um, artists of now, artists of the past, you know, and so to be able to contribute to that and that mission um, was perfect. It was just a way that, a, a direction that I always wanted to go and this was really a great opportunity to 
kind of share what I've been working on for a few years now with some young minds, a lot more young minds to get a better understanding of how they would perceive some of these things that I'm addressing. So it was fantastic. It's a no brainer. You know? mm -hmm. I right. love that because um, as a visual artist myself, I feel the same way. And so it fulfills right. some goals that I have as well as a gallery manager here. And right. I relate to a lot of what you said. That's right. I'm also an educator. So it's That's the same right. kind of thing. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And those conversations that we've had early on, you've really expressed that. So it was easy. It seemed like it was very easy to put this together because we were on the same frequency from from the beginning. I noticed that. And I this is the first type of work that I've done in an institution like this mm -hmm. on my own. Right. Um, I was under the tutelage of some other art gallery directors. Right. And to be able to handle this on my own, it just, I've learned a lot from working with you. You're very, very easy to work with. That's right. Very smart. Well, thank all you. All those kinds of things. Thank <laughs> you very much. It was a no-brainer for me, too. Yeah. So, um, talking about exhibiting, can you visit why you want or you need or you desire to exhibit your work? And, you know, what is your drive? What is your purpose? How does it fulfill you? Talk about that hmm. a bit. Well, I mean, that's that's something that I'd say you know, various artists might have issues with is creating and then also being vulnerable enough to, you know, or allowing yourself to be in that vulnerable state to actually show what you're actually creating. Um, I take a position of, of concept. I like to de develop the concept first, right? Mm -hmm. And there's more or less a purpose behind the work from the beginning, you know, which is the almost like the jump start of the creative process before I even start to uh, physically create. So each one of these pieces, um, and typically almost every piece that I create, is something that was meant to be shown, you know? It's not that I create for myself. It's never that. Once it's complete or I just walk away from it, it's, it's fair game. It's up for, you know, the ability for other people to come in and kind of, you know, soak it up. And uh, it helps me also with getting feedback from works that I create to, to kind of continue to evolve as an artist. Um, there is no right or wrong answer to it, but I really do depend on uh, the responses from people that view my work to kind of help me, you know, move into the next direction in this organic space that I create in. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's almost essential. It's a part of the process, you know. Um, there's a few things every now and then that I might create that are more or less for me or my family, right? But that's something that even still has such a heavy conceptual basis to it that it can also be shown in any, any public display. So mm. yeah, it's, it's just something that I've always thought was a part of the process. I never want to create something that only I can see. Yeah, yeah. That, that seems to be really a typical perspective and experience that most visual artists yeah. have, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, I relate to that right. also. So, um, curious to know, I love to hear artist's story. Mm -hmm. Can you briefly talk about when did this artistic journey begin for you? Can you remember like your first drawing or anything like that? Um, well, no, I've kind of, kind of been drawing for a long time. It's one of the first hobbies that I had as a, as a kid, you know, so whenever I first learned how to draw, it's it's been a thing since then. I come from a very creative family, you know, a lot of people in my family are very creative, but a lot of musicians, you know, um, a lot of abstract jazz musicians, mathematical thinking people, really sharp, really quick. And I also had a natural ability to uh, play different instruments, you know, right. and my daughter does as well at six, so she's really good. But I kind of just channeled that creative energy into the drawing. And so I would start drawing things that I would see. I was doing still lifes and things like that really young. And 
in my in my in my household it was just something that I did nobody really knew what drawing or art really was so we just kind of you know I was just a kid that liked to draw and family would come over all the time during the holidays and things like that and they would just say oh there he is again he's just drawing and I would just hand out the drawings that I do hang them up you know on the fridge and things like that let people take them and um, I started getting better and better and better and started taking you know a little art class here or there whenever uh, it was offered you know and kind of just you know messed around with it here and there but when I realized that I actually had a talent is when I would I got into sports that was around junior high, high school. Um, when I started playing sports, I put down the drawing pad. Mm. Like I didn't touch it for years. And every now and then I would get an itch to do something. I'd pick it up and I would start drawing again. But I realized I was way better than I was a few years ago, mm. right, without any practice. So it was all a mental thing. It was a mental thing. I could see it first and I could execute it, right? So I started drawing people. Then I started drawing myself in mirrors, right? And doing these self-portraits and uh, these cartoon characters. And then I started getting into these comic book type of things and really exercising the uh, skill of detail and and scale and and all of those type of things. And Ever since then, I've just kind of, you know, been been doing it, um, but as a hobby, as a hobby. So interesting. <laughs> so I have to go off track my list because I'm very fascinated. I'm trying to remember to, to go back to what yeah. you said. So the first thing you said that I found really fascinating was you got better and better and better. And so <laughs> that was great. <laughs> that was great. So glad. <laughs> it's water. I know. Maybe in there. Make sure you keep this. <laughs> yeah, it's um, in the cabinet. There's some paper towels. Thank um, you. Yeah, it, it's interesting. So you said you got better and better and better. I'm curious to know. Um, I have a real weird relationship with the word better mm -hmm. because it's been used almost like to discipline me as a child. Mm. So better, I don't like, but right. it is a good word. So. How did you evaluate yourself on how you got better? Well, I would say that, that right, the idea of being able to create something, um, almost mimic something, right? Thank you so much. To mimic something. Um, so to copy. Okay. Right? To copy it. So take, say, just say, for instance, you're trying to make a photocopy of something on the copy machine and it's low on ink. So you're like, ah, oh, that's not very good. It's not as clear as I would like it to be. Try it again. I need a better copy. Yeah. That's essentially how right. better plays into this equation, right? Oh, just here, you can bring it up closer. Um, that's how that plays into this type of scenario. So, thank you. So what you're saying is, from what I remember you said, um, you were, you, I guess you were drawing things. You were drawing people and things you saw. So you saw yourself render those drawings animals, of the objects and, okay, animals, animals and people. objects, people. More lifelike. Yeah. More realistic. Exactly. Okay. And so as I was able to create a better copy of it, I realized that I actually had more talent than I thought, you know? Yeah, that makes sense. Thank, Thank you, you so much. And that that that's basically how I started to evolve, you mm -hmm. know, and realize I had some sort of artistic ability. Yeah. It makes me think of um, so. Basically, long story short, I've heard people just be so enamored at Picasso's more contemporary work. Yeah. You know, very right. abstracted, right. Um, not very realistic. Mm -hmm. But so a lot of people think, oh, well, that's the best way to paint or that's the best way to draw. But the reality is he didn't get there from starting there. He got Correct. there from being able to render something that he saw with his eyes 
on a piece of paper. That's right. So I, I'm understanding what you're talking about for yourself in mm -hmm. the same life. That makes That's sense right. to me. The more that I go as an artist, um, I realize that I'm doing essentially the same thing I've been doing since I was a kid, yeah. you know? And what I have, uh, I guess, started doing without knowing it was manipulating these things, right? Where I'm now applying these concepts mm -hmm. and ideas and these thoughts to these people, these animals, these objects, to give them mm -hmm. an entirely different personality, mm -hmm. right? So now, I've come to a point where I've copied so much growing up to learn how to to create something with some sort of aesthetic, you know, uh, it, it's, it's like now I don't even want it to be exact, you know, but I've developed a skill set and a style that allows me to actually manipulate it. Right. Yeah. Right. But it, but we're to a point where you still can connect to what it originally was, you know? Mm -hmm. So it takes a long time to get to that. I mean, it's taken me all my life to get to that of point. Of course, yeah. and it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So I relate to that in terms of language, especially. Mm -hmm. So there's several languages that I've learned, but there's only a couple that I've learned really well right. where I can understand how to joke in that language, right. things like that. That's Otherwise, right. you can't manipulate That's right. it to where it makes any and those sense are, whatsoever. And those are things you pick yeah. up on the way. And it takes time. Right. Exactly. There's a lot of unwritten rules <laughs> right. that you, you learn with the experience. Exactly, right. 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 The other thing you said that I found really fascinating and somebody might be surprised by, but I really understand it and relate to it, and that is you began to realize what a good artist you were and how much you liked it mm -hmm. when you weren't doing it. That's right while you were playing sports. That's right. And then you would come back to it ever so often. So I find that really fascinating. Right. What is it about that that you feel like gave you this uh, clarity about who you well, were? Well, I'd say that it, it's the elements of nature that kind of allow me to find that clarity. Um, I do the same thing till this day. Um, when I'm creating, the last thing I want it to feel like is work. I, mm -hmm. I just don't, you know. I won't approach something if I feel like I'm gonna mess it up or if I'm not really vibing with it. Mm -hmm. So I really don't give myself an opportunity to mess up on a painting, mm -hmm. right? If I'm not feeling it, I'm not doing it. Mm -hmm. And when I was younger and I would put down the, the, uh, the art pads and the paints and let a couple of years go by and pick them back up. It was a real inspiration that brought me back to it, you know? Mm. And now I found different ways of giving myself that escape, you know, that break, that buffer between each painting that I create. Mm. So for instance, I can work on a piece now and once I finish that piece, I have to completely clean my studio up mm and get it all the way back set up, almost sometimes rearrange it before I start the next one because I never want to bring that old energy into a new piece. And in the midst of that, if I have the time to give myself some, a little bit of breathing room, I'll spend time in nature, you know, and I'll just kind of reset, reset. And so I'm, I really don't have a whole lot of time, you know, because every, almost every ounce of my time is allotted to something that essentially leads back to my performance as an artist, mm -hmm. you know? So it's just these things that I would do naturally as a kid that I've now kind of been able to, you know, when you learn more about yourself, mm -hmm. you, you kind of, you're able to structure things around you based on how you actually are. Mm -hmm. But you got to take some time to analyze yourself, which is another vulnerable thing to do, right? To be able to yeah. criticize yourself, analyze yourself, look at, look at yourself in the mirror and say, these are the things that I've done right. These are the things that I've done wrong. These are the things I can do better, you know, and, and give yourself the opportunity to really create without someone else telling you this is how it's supposed to be done or not. Mm -hmm. You just have to go for it, but you can only do that if you kind of start with the clean 
a clean slate. So every time. It's this is super interesting for me because, um, wow, I had a train of thought, and then yeah. because of what you said, it helps me understand why I think we connected because I do the exact same, same thing. thing. Right. Not every artist is that way. My no, husband's not even that no, I way. I work very differently. And so what I relate to is the need. It's the brain space. So Absolutely. the studio space is almost functioning in a way as our brain space. Yes. And so That's for right. you and for other artists and for me, that it's necessary to clear that brain space That's right. so that we can start fresh and start new. And That's for right. me too, and I think it's because of the way I was raised, hmm. nature is really important to kind of reset me. So it is. I understand why we had a kind of a connection. That That's makes right. Sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, let's see. Based on what you said, I think it'd be, what I'm curious about is, um, number one, the paintings that you chose to display in this particular exhibition mm -hmm. right now. So can you talk about why these paintings are here and even just uh, the way that they are um, installed in this space? Right. Well, it's, it's kind of something that um, it wasn't really planned. You know, it wasn't a set show or a large series of works that you can just say these are all created under the same inspiration and here's my show. These are all mixed up, you know, ideas and thoughts that essentially all deal with the concept of being finding balance, right? And so, of course, the show being called Level allows me to explore that and bring up a lot of questions. So I went just through some of the things that I've painted, some of the things that I was working on now, and was able to, you know, kind of pick and pull mm -hmm. and, and put together something that was going to be interesting enough, um, thought provoking enough, you know, um, and kind of raising a lot of questions that deal with balance, you know. Um, and so these were the pieces that I've chosen and it kind of worked out right. It, it, it's, it's like they're all displayed in kind of a timeline, you know, mm -hmm. and I couldn't have planned that, you know. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you just got to step back and allow the universe to universe a bit. And mm -hmm. it, it just seemed to work out. I'm not going to say perfect, but very well. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. So you, sh you, in fact, I mean, I understand it as a, an installation artist, you show up to the space. Yes. And you have your materials and then you respond to that. That's right. With your concept in mind. Right. That makes a lot of sense. That's right. So thinking about that, um, the word successful, um, I think, is, is important. It's relevant in yes. our careers. Mm -hmm. So how do you feel about the exhibit? Is it successful to you? Oh, absolutely. Yes, it was it was successful before we even hung the art. Um, <laughs> I like that. Yeah, it was already there. It you know when you go into a space and you get a vibe of the space, um, it does have an impact on what you created. Um, and the idea of level came, of course, you know just by looking at all of the different works and what they actually mean, but also the space lended itself well to level because it's a very balanced space. Mm -hmm. You know, it didn't, it didn't only allow me to show uh, canvas works, it also allowed me to show film works, you know. Mm -hmm. So you get an opportunity to address a lot of the same concepts with, through different mediums. Um, and that is a great way to balance out a show, you know. Um, and it's 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 still going to be a success after we take the art down you know because everything that's been archived everything that's been shared in social media um this talk this that we're doing now this this conversation is something that people can always go back to and and get a good understanding of why we do this you know in the first place um it's never about me you know mm. never about me so when I'm able to pull in this type of work and show it, especially amongst educators and students and, you know, get great sound feedback from peers and other people that are in the arts and artists, it, mm -hmm. it just is very helpful. So it's, it, it's definitely a success, a huge one, huge success. 
you, you said it's never about you, and I know that um, the reputation that artists, I'd, I'd say this, the spirit reputation of artists is that we're narcissistic, we're very selfish, we're very self-absorbed, yeah. um, and I think that's, that's an old, yeah. kind of dated description, but I also think people do think that. People well, I mean, do think we're sometimes very people self are that, you know, yeah. um, especially in, in the technological world that we live in now <laughs> and in, in the social media phase of things. It, it is all about your 15 minutes of fame. It is all about me, 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 I, 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 you know, um, you have to make a a conscious effort, strong effort not to do that. You know, um, one of my most like most used taglines and hashtags is it's all about the art. You know, I always lead with that because I want people to understand that this is not something that I'm doing to plaster my face in front of you. Mm -hmm. It's 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 definitely my creations, it's definitely my brand, but the art itself is for everybody, yes. right? Um, and so I try to find the best way to to bring that to the table, to the forefront. And it's been very successful in that sense because people can view the art, have an opinion about the art, right? Mm -hmm. And they don't feel like they're under a microscope or someone's judging them based on their perspective or their perception. It, I mean, this, this, this art is here to provoke question and to also test and challenge your perception, you know? So, like I said before, before I even start to physically create anything, uh, I'm already looking at the concept and how I can actually share this publicly, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. yeah, once I'm done with it, I wanna get it off my table. Sure, that yeah, makes a lot of sense. Right. Mm -hmm. So a couple things that I heard you say that stand out to me are the intentionality. Yes. And so I think, like you said, it's, there's an intentionality in showing up in the studio and how you do mm -hmm. that and what that means mm -hmm. and how that looks for you. Absolutely. And then also the intentionality to keep away from making yourself the center because That's it right. is very kind of a normal thing that happens in the world today. Right. So I appreciate the, that opinion and that viewpoint. Yeah, right. um, the other thing that I, I failed to mention is that this is nearly 10 years correct? That's right. Um, kind of compiled. It's not all the work that you've done. <laughs> right. That you call it, kind of call it a retrospective. That's so in right. a way, that's what this body of work is here. Absolutely. And um, for me, when I see someone's work in retrospective, um, Philip Gustin was one of the first ones that, mm. whose work I saw at the Fort Worth Modern. Mm -hmm. it, made, it made such a difference because when I just see one painting, I have a certain kind of feeling and sense, and that's fine. Right. But then to see a retrospective of, of an artist's work, um, at least for me as an artist, and I think it could do this for a, a number of people, it gives them, like you said, a perspective, a different perspective. That's right. And you had intentionality in the perspective on some level that you were relaying here, mm -hmm. but also giving the freedom for the viewer to, to respond because your That's intentionality right. is asking questions. That's right. What, which I think is one of the main tenets in being an artist That's is right. helping people see the questions that are out there. I right? couldn't have explained that any better. You already that did. That was fantastic. <laughs> you already did. Uh, let's see. Okay, let's do this. Um, I'm curious to know about, okay, I'm a sculptor. I don't paint. Right. I love paint. I love the viscosity of paint. I love house paint, mm -hmm. but I'm not a painter. So That's why right. painting? Why video? Why those mediums? Very good. Very good question. Well, you know, you kind of start with what you got, you know, and um, when I really started selling my work professionally, it was something that kind of forced me to use what I had, right? Um, it was pulling out some old paints, you know, really um, oils and acrylics. There was a piece of wood laying in the garage, just a big, just a raw, just piece of plywood, right? And it wasn't even cut symmetric or anything. And I just primed it and started using those paints on it and the tools that I had, you know, there was very little material and I didn't have 
barely any money, you know, but I, I felt that I needed to just kind of work my way through this painting. Maybe I would something would be revealed. Right. And when I finished this piece, um, I entitled it Execute. And the piece itself um, turned out really beautiful, really beautiful painting, um, an abstract painting. Mm -hmm. And someone saw the painting, you know, and asked how much the painting cost. And I'm like, that's not for sale, mm -hmm. but this piece is on your wall. It's beautiful. This is amazing. We know you're an artist, but how does this work? And I'm like, I don't know if you want it. Just make me an offer. Yeah. yeah. And it made me an offer. <laughs> and I was like, you would really pay that much for my painting, <laughs> yeah. right? And so I kind of learned how to use what I had to create. And I realized that that was enough, you know? And still, till this day, I use very minimal supplies mm -hmm. to create. I think that the power behind what you're making definitely comes from the idea, the initial thought and idea. And if you can learn how to execute something with all, all those fancy bells and whistles, mm -hmm. then it's way more gratifying and rewarding at the end. And that's why I fell in love with painting and paint, you mm -hmm. know, and I love sculpture. I love metal. I love wood. I love ceramics. I've played around with all of those things, photography, film, a lot of different mediums. But I'm one of those people that really believes that if your peers don't give you access to that, if they don't say essentially, OK, JT, you are a photographer. You know, I've seen you work on this. You've had much discipline in this or you're a sculptor. Then I don't think that I should call myself that, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'll never take on a title mm -hmm. that I haven't earned from my peers. Mm -hmm. And so I'm a painter, right? I'm a painter. Um, I've had several friends that are in filmmaking that love my short films mm -hmm. and they've done lots of big projects, lots of films and in confidence in a conversation kind of like this, JT, you're a filmmaker mm -hmm. like okay you know I understand now because I've done so many different little films mm -hmm. but I didn't go to film school you know yeah. I didn't go to film school but no I do make films you know mm -hmm. and that's kind of one of my jokes is like I'm a, I'm a painter oh no yeah I make films you know mm -hmm. but I just respect the disciplines too much to to call myself something that my peers haven't really blessed me with you know well, yeah. it makes a lot of sense, yeah. and I understand it, yeah. really relate to it. Mm -hmm. um, to me, I'm almost evaluating you as a conceptual artist, because yeah. the way you're speaking, it's like that particular idea mm -hmm. needed to be video. Yes, so it had to be. So that idea tells you what form you might be using. Right. And, it, and, and one of the things, <laughs> you have confidence here as well in the paintings so these ideas make sense that they would be paintings as well that's right so i get that yes so i do want to look at some specific works and i know you've done this before um okay. so, but if you don't mind um i'd like to look at i can choose one but if you'd like to choose a painting oh, and talk about choose. it yeah um, which would you We've like to talk about? We've talked about this one so much, mm -hmm. and I think it'd be really important to talk about that, that work. Right. Just because of how strong it is conceptually. Right. Well, I mean, this piece is called What Sets You Claim. And this piece is, I mean, it, it's very attractive in the sense that it catches your eye. Of course, it's subjective, you know. Um, you have all of these things going on in this painting um, that kind of correlate to the things that we see in the media, popular culture, things of the past, things of the present. And it's almost like the futurist in me. You know, when I created this painting some years ago, it's like predicting some of the things that could possibly happen based on the things that are happening and taking place at that particular moment. So when you look at this piece and the balance of this piece from 
what happens on the LA streets, you know, with the difference in gangs versus what happens in politics and the difference in political parties and colors, reds and blues and things like that. You start to find this parallel, you know, and you start to see how one thing could actually trigger another thing, you know. Yeah. And I created a self-portrait with this. I felt that it was necessary for me to be the subject in this piece because the script that goes in the back of this painting, it just says, stop killing yourself mm -hmm. over and over and over and over again. So it's posing a question as to what that actually means with stop killing yourself and how the figure in the front driving this car is navigating something that you might actually have control over, you know? So it's questioning the amount of control that each subject has when they're all in the same vessel going the same direction, you know? Because that never really happens. You never see that put in the same situation. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why the piece is what it is. And I think why it has so much, uh, gets so much attention. Um, because it can be looked at as something controversial, but it's actually uh, put there to expand the mind so that people can understand how to, it's almost like, look at this from a different perspective, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and challenge the perception. Because if you see any one of these figures without the others, it would mean something entirely different. Mm -hmm. But there's a story there, you know? So yeah. th one of the words we use in art is the juxtaposition. That's right. A lot of people don't like that word anymore, but it's a really that's a important great word. word. It's great. And right. that's what's happening here, the that's juxtaposition right. of each of the characters mm -hmm. and the characters to that's the background. Right. Um, would you mind talking about the story about the people who delivered the mattress to your house? Oh, yeah, sure. Well, yeah, I just me and my wife needed to get new mattresses. And so when the delivery guys came over, to bring the mattresses in. This piece was hanging in the office, which was towards the front of our place. Um, and it's just hanging on the wall and these guys are bringing the mattresses in. And one of the delivery guys stopped and just was staring at it. And he got a little emotional about the expression. And as we talked about it, he told me that this resonated with him in so many levels because he was in the military. and essentially what I'm showing in this piece that pretty much happens here in the country um, also happens in the military. And that was really interesting for me because I was thinking, well, the idea of recruiting people to serve their country, right? In, in this piece, it looks like he's recruiting people to kill themselves. Mm. It, that's the juxtaposition there. And so when he made the connection this way, it's like he's had these different experiences. And I almost had to question the authenticity of what he was saying because it didn't sound right. Mm. But as an artist, I had to think about the duality. Right. You know, there's always a duality to everything. And you know, his personal experience and what he was describing, which he didn't want to speak on a lot, um, let me know how powerful this piece actually was. And I'd never shown it publicly. I think at the time I just kind of finished it, you know. Um, but for him to have such a strong reaction to this, you know, both of them, actually, both of them, you know. Um, but, you know, when you when you've been in the military and you've been in the war and things like that, you can't tell. Nobody can tell you what that's like unless you unless you've experienced mm -hmm. that. So I just, you know, I knew that something was special about this painting and it, mm -hmm. it actually had more meaning than I knew, which is what I depend on the viewers to actually provide so that I can continue to navigate in this organic space, you know. Mm -hmm really just so grateful that that came up in the conversation because that is right. a huge thing about being an artist yeah. and that is why we do want our work to go out that's, that's why right we put our work out that's there. right it is dealing with these questions and also though yeah. you know i know there is some artwork that i think can truly be labeled more like propaganda. Yeah, for sure. Very direct. Mm -hmm. It's very short sighted. Right. And very, very intended perspective. And some people say that's not even art. 
I don't say that. I think it's okay to say that. Right. I mean, they can say what's art if if they want to. True. Um, but there is a difference in stating a statement, very clear, mm -hmm. very short, and also opening up a question and right. a dialogue. And that's what I try to do with every <coughs> piece. It, I'm never given an answer in my art pieces. It, it, they only, it, they only bring out lots and lots of questions. These mm -hmm. things are layered, mm -hmm. layered, and I think that's a big difference between something that's so heavily conceptual versus something that could be more propaganda is that you're dealing with more layers. So it, it's open for interpretation in many ways. You can look at this piece, what sets you claim, and you can draw so many different conclusions and questions and answers of your own from what you see based on your own personal experiences. And that's, that's that, that example of these delivery men coming in and seeing this piece and their response to it was based off of past experiences exactly right, right. that I, I never would have thought about. That's wonderful. Speaking is, of that. I mean, oh. exceptional. I just thought it was fantastic. It is a real gift, yeah. isn't it, to be able to have that dialogue. Yeah. And then we had a dialogue during your opening on Friday night. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think the painting that I'll choose is the painting of Jesus Right. Um, with the three tones of skin. That's right. So could you talk about that and maybe include a little bit, if you recall, I think I recall what Professor Medina was talking about, the conversation with her sure, students as sure. well, if that can come into it. But talk about that painting. Well, that, that painting is entitled, Oh My God. And that painting is, is, is a part of a series called Color Value. So we're really dealing with color value from a technical perspective and more of a conceptual perspective, right? and taking these these popular images and manipulating them to propo kind of propose this question of what's valuable and what's not is essentially what these things are about mm -hmm. so what the professor was actually leading to was i think she had mentioned seeing other works of jesus painted as a black man but the features were painted of a black person or something related to Africa or whatever the case is. And we've seen lots of those images, um, what black Jesus would look like kind of thing. And that wasn't my mission with this particular project. I thought it would be much stronger to paint the image of Jesus the way that we see in American culture mm -hmm. and change the hue mm -hmm. that way to see if the difference in the color value changes your value hmm. you know and how you see the same aesthetic image but with a different color so that's what that piece is all about and that's one of those pieces that i believe will miss a lot of people will miss it they'll miss it they'll miss it they'll miss it which is actually not a bad thing you know um i'm a firm believer in propelling myself into the future I always think about how things could be, what things will be. And I would say that this piece, along with several others, might be more understood maybe five, ten years from now. Mm -hmm. They'll get it. Mm -hmm. um, there's a couple of people during the, the opening that were like, I don't get it, you know, with several of these pieces. I don't get it. And that's a great indication that I'm on to something fantastic, you know, because not everything is meant for you and maybe not even at that moment, but in time it might hit you if it's supposed to, you know? Yeah. That certainly <laughs> has precedence. Yeah. You could probably name painter after painter Absolutely. after painter in the history well, of yeah. art that People didn't well, get it. Well, they weren't it. great then, but then no, they're great now, yeah. right? Yeah. And didn't get what they were doing. You Picasso for be, one. There's yeah. quite a few of them. You have to be true to what to the art itself, but exactly. Yeah, I knew that this that image of 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 Jesus would be something that would expand the mind and really, really, because uh, you know, when you think about it, how many images are a part of our culture that have value right mm -hmm. there's not very many really that you can think of that are kind of universal mm -hmm. that have that kind of value to 
a lot of different people from a lot of backgrounds, mm -hmm. you know. And so these pieces here aren't the only pieces to the color value series. There, there's more. Yeah. Right. There's more. And they'll do the same thing that the Jesus piece would do. Because the iconography That's is right. very universal. Absolutely. Is what you're saying. It makes Absolutely. sense. Absolutely. Yes. So it, it makes focus. sense to manipulate something like that. Right. To, to try to, uh, you know, just have people develop further questions and also mm -hmm. challenge the perception, you know. You had a conversation with people online somehow, right? With the Jesus painting? Yes, yes. That's well, interesting What too. happened with that was sometimes with social media, what I'll do is I'll, I'll share the progress of the work. So as I'm creating them, uh, you know, I'll take shots of, of me creating as I'm going along. And this day I just so happened to um, put out a piece that a picture of me creating this Jesus piece. Um, but it was I had only worked my way through the first Jesus. Right. And I was working from left to right. So they could only see this image of Jesus as a white person. <laughs> You know, I, I guess that's a, what they would associate that as. And, mm -hmm. and so uh, the conversation started sparking online and I was like, wow, I was just sharing, sharing the progress like I normally do. And after you get so many notifications, you have to kind of go back and see what's happening. And there is full dialogue of people having conversations amongst each other and arguments amongst each other about this. So you, you, you realize how strong of an image this is. Right. Um, but. They started talking about things that were insinuating that Jesus was this rather than that. And, oh, we're going to have to teach him about what Jesus really is and what his real name was. And all these things that were happening and going on. And no matter where you are, where you stand in history, it's just interesting to see people actually battle about these pers these perspectives and these perceptions and and all of the all of the above. And I, I, I thought, wow, this is so far off the mark of what this piece stands for. The piece isn't even a quarter of the way finished and it's already complicated. By the time they see what the finished product is, I don't think that this conversation would even be relevant, you know, but it just shows you where the mind goes. Mm -hmm. So it gave me even more inspiration to continue to make this piece what it essentially came out to be. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense, and it just goes back to putting your work out there. Yeah. You know, uh, one artist might be <laughs> yeah. privy to that that um, conversation and get really angry and want to quit doing art. No, I can't but instead, do that. it is something that can yeah. really fuel what we do. It right? depends on your reasons for doing it. Exactly. Yeah. It's a very and good point. If you're afraid of controversy or people that are being combative or whatever the case might be. <clears throat> Those things don't, I'm not afraid of those things, mm -hmm. right? Um, Sounds like you're fueled by them. Well, a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. I, I'm a little bit more in tune with who I am as yeah. an individual. And everything that I do, especially artistically, comes from a great place, a place of peace, mm -hmm. you know, um, the togetherness. So when what I'm doing, sometimes the images that I'm using, the iconography that I'm using, by the time you realize how it's been manipulated, you, you have to like, wow, that's pretty interesting. Yeah. I never thought of it that way. But no, never, never an intention to to make someone feel bad, you know, yeah. or take a shot at anybody in that regard. Right. Um, so I paint and create very freely, very freely. You know, I don't worry about you know, where my next check is coming from. Mm -hmm. I don't allow any of those things to interfere with the creative process. So mm. I'm okay with sharing the progress of some things, you know, sure. and yeah, allowing takes people a lot of to, confidence oh, absolutely. to do that. Yeah. Absolutely. I know I do want to come back a little bit to your um, statement, but I think I might need to hone in on a little bit. Mm -hmm. So um, let's talk about this statement. Um, you state that your works painted in tones of gray dismiss color 
and environmental aesthetic references in an effort to force us to deal with the solitude of each subject matter mm -hmm. and the stylistic characteristics in your portraiture. Right. Can you talk about that a little bit? Right. Well, what that, what that really addresses is a lot of the works that I create are in grayscale. And that's essentially what we were going to bring to mm -hmm. the gallery originally. Mm -hmm. um, and when I create in grayscale, I don't like to fill the canvas up with anything in the background, right, or in the negative space mm -hmm. around the subject. I like to focus on the subject itself because what I'm doing with the subject, whether it's a person or an animal or a thing, an object, it's being used in a way to push through a different characteristic. So it's almost like applying, like the, the animals that I paint are part of a series called WILD, right? W-I-L-D, and it stands for Watching Individuals Live Dangerously, right? And I use these wildlife animals to push out a human characteristic Right. And there are some hidden jewels in every piece. If you pay close attention to it, you would actually see it. That would make it more human than you would actually realize. Mm -hmm. And to be able to almost deliver that, I have to get rid of just say the jungle scenario around the animal. Context. That's right. Yep. So it may look very simple, but it's much harder to create in a grayscale format like that for me. Than to do any one of these mm -hmm. I can understand that. pieces, right? Right. Makes a lot of sense. So the viewer is forced to kind of approach those works in a way that causes them to f narrow their. That's focus. right. There's nothing because else to grab onto. There's no other to. information. Right. There's nothing there. There are no words. There are no circles. There are no fancy this that. There are no trees there are no there's nothing there mm -hmm. there's no buildings there's no other people it's just this thing it's just yeah. a thing there you know and you gotta you gotta kind of look for something in that one thing you know and it's there you know um it takes a little work right but as an artist um i'd say that this is one of my uh one of the things that I, I like doing when I'm creating, but it's also one of the things that could hurt me as an artist. Mm -hmm. When you talk about uh, just an art career of doing Risky. something, uh, having that one mm -hmm. trick that you do over and over and over again mm -hmm. that everybody can say, oh, that's what he does, that one thing. Mm -hmm. I haven't allowed myself to do that yet. I'm still evolving, you know. I, mm -hmm. I didn't really start professionally until a little bit later until I was 30 mm -hmm. and that's when I said I would give myself 10 years to really grow mm -hmm. learn what I can do what I can't do mm -hmm. and then kind of narrow it down to what this thing might be and if I choose to do that you know right. yeah but I love to create freely I love to uh, exercise mm -hmm. concepts and sometimes you just got to do them in different ways you know yeah, it's such an interesting conversation. I feel like that's an hour conversation oh, absolutely. to be had at some point because when you think <laughs> about making an art career for yourself, so many different contemporary artists right now mm -hmm. come to mind who really have a particular way that they address the work, the canvas. Right. So it is, and they're successful at it. Oh, yeah. But what does that do? do to you if if you're constantly doing the same thing over and over again just I'm curious I'm, I'm curious too I, I don't can't know. do that I, <laughs> I haven't know. been able to do that yeah um I it's mean, all I relevant that. yeah it's all relevant and that, that's the freedom that artists have to be able to do things like that um I imagine that when you're trying to establish a marketplace you know when we're talking about the difference and <laughs> differentiation between being an artist and the art business, you know, right. which are two entirely different things, right? Yeah. But when you're in, and this is why a lot of times when we have these talks about art and artists, um, you know, we talk about art business should be separated from the artist, so to speak, so that mm -hmm. artists can continue to create while mm -hmm. someone else handles art business. But mm -hmm. 
it just depends on what you're in it for. You're right. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. Yeah. And we have to make a living. That's, That's right. really important. Right. You know, and, and not all the time do <laughs> you, are you afforded, you know, those kind of rights just because you've kind of found this one thing that you like to do. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult to, to really make it in, in this business. And it's, uh, it's kind of saturated, you know, it is, and, but it is. at the same time, if you're an artist, then for me, there's some things that I must do creatively in order to actually find that balance, you know, for yourself. Yeah. That, mm -hmm. that outlet that we talk about, mm -hmm. it's real, right? It's a real thing, you know? So I'm, I, you know, I kind of yield to it. I'm very true with that. So I'm able to create freely, you know, and I do fine as an artist and financially and things like that. But I also have a very supportive family, you know, and um, just nice, very smart people around me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my wife is phenomenal. You know, my daughter is great. But you got to have all of those elements in place for you to be able to do something that is even worth looking at. Yeah. It's true. Yeah, and you're right. And Absolutely, you're right. it all. It, there's a. It's. It's like a. There's a formula there, that you have to work out on your own. Everybody's mm -hmm. formula is different, but depending on what your ultimate goal is, you know, if you if you plan accordingly, then you can you can have an impact in the art world. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I have a lot of other questions, but I think I'll kind of <laughs> kind of get to the end sure, of it. Sure. And that is. Um, what have you thought about? What are your plans for the rest of, not just this year, but for the next year? Well, we have just now entered into level 10. And I spoke a little bit about my levels at the opening. Um, each year is a different level for me. So I'll be creating within this year of 10, right? Um, which I consider the new beginning. So it's more of an exploration, you know, a lot of international travel and uh, mixing in with different art colonies and things like that mm -hmm. here in the States and um, also abroad. Um, and just allowing myself to not have a plan. It's like my plan is to not have a plan, you know, mm -hmm. so that I can do whatever comes. Because the one thing that I'm certain of and the one thing I know that I can do is execute. So I can create whenever I want to create. So these all these years of preparation have allowed me to own that position. But the other part that's more difficult is finding the reason to create. And that's where I'm putting my focus at now. So I want to do things that are more along the lines of what we've just done here, mm -hmm. you know, and working with educators. And who knows, I might become an educator myself. I might, you know, I might want to get my master's in fine art or something. Who knows? I don't know. But I do want to do something that's meaningful and worthwhile. And that's sharing my gift with other people, you know, and learning from other people. That's essentially what we're doing, you know, with this new beginning. So who knows where it's going to be? It's exciting. Yeah. And, and it sounds like in a way, what I relate to is clearing out the space again. Absolutely. It's like clearing out that space. I push yeah. the reset button. Push the reset, exactly. Right. <laughs> so has your experience been pretty good here working at Mountain View? And oh, would you recommend an artist working with the I art department? I have a few that I would recommend. Uh, there's been a couple of artists that expressed to me that they didn't know that this gallery was here and how beautiful this gallery is. and to have talks with your peers about what you're doing of course people pay attention to so many things they don't say it all the time but they're always watching um and for those that do want to have that conversation to see something like this happen that is not your typical art party you know with all of the bells and whistles <laughs> and the music and the drinks flowing and all this <laughs> stuff and you get liquored up and there's paintings all on the walls with prices and you know all that kind of stuff you got to really humble yourself and realize that this is a bigger much bigger fish to fry this is something that is directly connected to young minds and people right that can essentially 
help them evolve as artists or just people in general. You know, there's an exchange of energy there. Right. Yeah, it's an exchange of energy. To be able to show works and not have them for sale, for me, is that, I mean, it's, it's, it's like so refreshing because mm -hmm. it's all about the art. You can focus on the concepts, the ideas, and talk really about why this is even here as mm -hmm. opposed to how much you want for it. So yes. even though the works could sell, Absolutely. just the fact of that being stated, yeah. that that is not right. the main reason why they're here right. was a draw for you. that's not the main reason why they were created in the first place. Yeah, interesting. If someone's interested enough, based on my experience when I sold my first painting, right, um, for a few thousand dollars mm -hmm. with scrap material, it, I never created it for that. I was trying yeah. to push myself to a place of execution and hopefully something would reveal itself out of that experience. Mm -hmm. And what revealed itself was someone interested enough in what I created to, to make me an offer. So but you're, there was a lesson in that. You exactly. Know? Yeah. And so you're, you're seeing, you're experiencing that the two entities, both a commercial gallery yeah. and an educational institution right. are very valuable. They're so valuable, both, <clears throat> both, absolutely both. And I mean, it, it's all relative. It just depends on what your end goal is. If mm -hmm. you're doing something in an educational environment or you're doing something in a gallery environment or if you're an independent artist and you're doing your own shows or you're collaborating and doing things in restaurants or whatever, it's all relevant, you know? As mm -hmm. long as you put it out there and allow people to engage with what you're doing, right. yeah. But you gotta stand for something, you know? makes a lot of yeah. sense. Let yeah. the art sell itself. Sometimes it does. Very true. You have a logo. Yes. When did you create that? Why did you mm. create that? And where is your, where can we find your logo? This, this logo is the paint man drips. That's what this is. And I created this um, in 2014. I did a series of works called um, The Father Project. And this was something that I, I created to basically kind of bring some sort of conversation to the topic of fatherhood in general. And I talked with over 100 individuals, men and women, about their experiences with fatherhood, mm -hmm. not as a child, but as a father or a single mother or whatever, just to get the different perspectives. And I used each one of those conversations to create an abstract thought inspired by someone else's experience. And I did a series of these silhouettes of myself with abstract formation in the middle, in, in it. Seen right. Mm -hmm. And it was, uh, I guess, throughout the exhibit seeing how people gravitated to those images um i realized that i kind of came up with something really special and i was like that's a branding thing right there mm -hmm. you know nobody really looked at that like oh that's you right mm -hmm. and I'm like yeah because this is essentially my contribution to the father project in my expression mm -hmm. but as time went on i kind of just perfected the image, mm -hmm. dripped the paint from the image, and allowed it to become the symbol for a creative spirit that lies within all of us, right? Mm -hmm. So it was a great way for me to also sign my paintings, right? Stamp my paintings, mm -hmm. and kind of lead people down this road of creativity with this image. So when they, whenever you see this, you know something worthwhile is coming. Mm -hmm. Right. And T-shirts, you put it on T-shirts and you don't you never underestimate the power of t shirts exactly. You don't have to be a fashion designer. You don't have to have a sewing machine and sew and do all of these great things to make you feel like you're this that a T-shirt with the image that inspires people and has a positive meaning can go a long way. Mm -hmm. Right. A hoodie, Absolutely. A hat. And then exactly. it expands and expands because the demand is there. Right. You know, and every time we produce some, they sell out and produce more. Mm -hmm. But 
I always do a different color or a limited something so people really have something um, that is limited and special. And if it ever grows bigger than that, then we'll have those conversations later. Okay. But it's really just a extension of the artistic spirit that lives in all of us. So people love this all over, you know. So the logo and also your your tags, um, art by Jay Taylor. Mm -hmm. And do you have another one? Art by Jay Taylor is is the, the tag. That's right. So that's important for people to remember. Everything. These things sell online too. Of course, all of your work does. Yes, they sell online. You can go to my website, artbyjtaylor.com. Mm -hmm. Whenever the apparel and the merchandise is available, there's always a tab there and a link to get you to anything that you want to okay. get. Um, it doesn't last very long, yeah. um, but, uh, you know, it's great. It, it's, it's great when someone wants one you see an order come in every time it's like oh somebody wants a hoodie or somebody wants a t-shirt and you sold some during the opening yeah and <laughs> it's always great. great to have and yeah. and and i know how i feel when i go and experience artists in their works and things i always want to pick up something yeah if it's not a painting then it maybe it's a, it's their t-shirt or mm -hmm. you know i would love to be a walking billboard for them you know especially when it deals with something creative you know something absolutely. that you admire and appreciate absolutely exactly. yeah. right right you just kind of allow the possibility to be there and and see what happens you know we can't control every aspect of everything but if yeah. you can try to Try to future what it could be, you know, just project, project yourself into the future and see what could be, you know. You can always say, oh, I thought that could happen, you know, or yeah, it, the possibilities are endless, you know. That is an amazing way to end this. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's fantastic. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much for the interview. Thank really you for having it. me. I really appreciate it. You're welcome.